to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. I'm going to continue with our sermon series, the book of Romans, the gospel of God. Let's pray. Father, bless the reading of your word, anoint it to our lives. We love you. We honor you. In the name of Jesus, we all say, Amen. 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 You may be seated this morning as we can get our house lights on here this morning. Praise the Lord so I can see my notes. Hello, somebody. Amen. You know, I've always had good eyes, but I'm, I'm getting, I'm, I'm going to turn 45 next week. <laughs> and, and, I'm, and I'm fighting it. Hello. So, so, you know, they say, you know, because I was in prison and I used to read a lot in the dark in prison, you know, you, you don't have a light. So they say, they said, that's not good for your eyes. Yeah. And so I finally learned my lesson. I said, they need to turn the lights on. Yeah. And they need to get those back lights too in the back. They're still off. Amen. I don't see how I see it, but you know, amen. Praise God. Hey. Amen. The gospel, of, I want to talk to you this morning. They can put my, my banner up, amen, that I made. They, they want to put their stuff, but not my stuff. Amen. So, I'm, a, I'm a little designer too. Amen. So I made I made the Gospel of God one. They'll put it up there. But I want to talk. I'm going to continue to talk to you about the Gospel of God. Amen. As we as we go through the Book of Romans, and this morning as we sang that song, Amen. Holy. Uh, that's a beautiful song. Amen. Holy forever. Yes. Holy forever. And 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 and. You know, that's a message that a uh, holiness that churches sometimes shy away from. But it's still so relevant to today and to the church today and so important to the church today. Now, this is not going to be like a bang you over the head message about holiness, but we're going to talk about it because as we go through this verse, verse 1, it talks about an aspect of holiness. And that aspect is... The set apart parts. Amen. The set apart part, and and that last week or a couple weeks ago, we were able to. I was able to break down uh, some of this verse to you, and then you can go back and see it. It's on our YouTube channel. Amen. The Gospel of God, Book of Romans. That was part one, and so we're going to be going through a whole series, and we're going to try to get through the whole Book of Romans. It might. I don't know how long it's going to take us, but uh, Amen. We'll get there. Amen. amen. <laughs> And so we, we, we stopped at this part. We talked about being a servant, a doulos. And we are a doulos. How many remember that? Yeah. A servant means doulos. And Christ Jesus is our kairos. Yeah. He's our Lord. We talked about how that, you know, we're only free, we're only truly free when we are Christ's slave. Yeah. Well we got to this point, we started talking about the calling of God upon our lives. The calling of God. It's interesting when you look at the Apostle Paul's life that he's a perfect example on how the calling of God is, is a beautiful thing. Yes. The calling God of God is, is a beautiful thing. When, when God calls you, when God calls you, he calls you by name calls you into the ministry. I believe that God has a calling for all of us. Yeah. God has a calling for everyone, but we all got to discover that calling. Yeah. Have you discovered your calling yet? Yeah. We, we, and, and so it's a beautiful thing to discover God's calling upon our lives. Yeah. But it's also something that can be quite complicated at times. Come on now. The calling can be quite complicated at times. And, and Paul is a perfect example of this. As we look at Paul, he says, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle. But you know that when God called the apostle Paul to be an apostle, it wasn't well received. It wasn't well received by the church. It wasn't well received by... Even the other apostles. Because to be an apostle, there had to be, you had to have three qualifications to be an apostle. Now today, there are a lot of people, ministers that will call themselves, label themselves apostles. They will label themselves apostles. But in reality, there were three things that qualified you according to the scriptures 
that qualified you to be an apostle. Let me give you those three things. Number one, the person had to be a direct disciple of Jesus during his earthly ministry. So uh, first of all, an apostle had to be one of Jesus' direct disciples. In other words, he had to be one of the twelve. He had to be one of the twelve, or at least an, or at least alive and part of Jesus' ministry during that time. That was one of the qualifications. Now, Paul wasn't directly Jesus' disciple. Matter of fact, Jesus didn't appear to Paul till after he died and he resurrected. Amen. So here was a conflict of interest with, with Paul. And then secondly, a person had to be an eyewitness of Jesus' resurrection. An eyewitness. Have you ever been an eyewitness? Right? Come on, right? We live in the hood, so. <laughs> you know, we don't, we don't, we don't testify. <laughs> but we're delivered now. We testify for Jesus, right? Yeah. And so a person had to be an eyewitness of Jesus' resurrection. Again, Paul was not an eyewitness. He wasn't an eyewitness of Jesus' resurrections. So again, this kind of disqualified him. And then thirdly, a person had to have his call from Jesus himself. A person had to have a direct call into ministry from Jesus himself. Now, on this one, this is the only one that Paul can say, listen, I got this. Jesus himself called me. He appeared to me on the road to Damascus. And he damasked Paul. I know we're in the season where everybody likes to wear masks. Right? But I thank God that God comes and he takes the mask off. Amen. Amen. That's what God did to Paul. Right. God appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus and he damasked him. Right. He damasked him. God wants to damask you this morning. Yeah. Matter of fact, go ahead and take off the mask right now. Take off the mask of everything's okay. Come on. Come on. Take off the mask like, you know, I'm, ha I'm happy, you know, I'm, I'm good. You know, you can, you can have joy. It's okay to have joy, right? Sometimes we, we're, we're good at putting masks on. We're good at putting filters on. Yeah. Yeah. But God comes and says, you know what, take all that stuff off. You don't need it to look good. I created you beautiful as you are. Yes. So these three things have a big qualification. But, but when, God Paul, when God called the Apostle Paul to become an apostle, he was missing some of these things. And so he had to, he had to fight for his calling. He had to strive for his calling. He had to prove, huh? not to man, not to man. Amen. But I, I, I believe he, he, it, it was to God, Amen. Yeah. right? And it was not even put to God because God is the one who called him. In other words, he had to just lay it out and listen, God called me. And the evidence of the calling is in my ministry. Amen. Yeah, that's right. And like they say, the proof is in the pudding. Right. Huh? You know, you don't got to announce yourself. You just got to just, just be who God called you to be. Yes. Now, Paul clearly lays it, lays it out. I'm called to be an apostle. I'm called to be an apostle. Now, the scripture, the Bible is very powerful. The Bible was written by holy men inspired by God. But you know that the scripture, and it's important that we understand it's the authority of scripture. It's the authority of scripture because when the rulers, when the people who wrote it wrote it, they were laying down authority. They were laying down principles. Amen. They had to pioneer something. See, Paul here, remember. People didn't believe in his apostleship. So in his letter, he had to lay down that he was an apostle. Yeah. Amen. But not just in his letter, in his actions, yeah. in his ministry. 
When he laid hands, people got healed. Amen. When he preached, people got saved. Amen. When he believed, things happened. So people seen the evidence of his ministry, and that gave proof that he was an apostle. But he didn't stop there. He also had to write it in his letters. He had to let it be known because nobody else was announcing him as an apostle. So he had to write it in his letter. Paul, first of all, a servant, a doulos of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle. It was almost like he was how to elevate himself. Yeah. It's almost like he had to toot his own horn. Yeah, yeah. You know, Jesus was a, is a second. For Jesus, is almost like the same thing, except for Jesus didn't do it. We did it for him. Christians did it for him. You know, when Jesus was born, Jesus wasn't born with the name Christ Jesus. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. He was born with the name Bar Jesus Bar yeah. of Joseph. In other words, meaning Jesus, the son of Joseph. Yeah. Christ was not in his name. Yeah. Who put Christ in his name? We did. The church. The apostles. The apostles did. Now, of course, he mentioned it. And when, and, and the, and, and, and when he taught them, he, say, he would say that he was the Messiah. He would refer to scriptures that prophesied about him. In other words, he had to lay down the authority. But he wasn't just laying it down with his words. He laid it down with his actions. In other words, he healed people. He did miracles. He discipled. He loved people. He had a following. And that was evidence that he was the son of God. He was the son of God. But before, he was just born with the simple name. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Joseph and Mary. Jesus, that's it. But now that name is the name that is above all names. Amen. Amen. That name is the name that's above all names. That name no longer is just Jesus, but it is Christ Jesus. The word Christ means Savior. Yeah. And here, Paul, he writes it. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus. But when he was born, he didn't have Christ in front of his name. It was just Jesus. But let me tell you something. When you add Christ in front of it, that name Jesus turns into a whole different thing. It turns into the power of a name that can save. Yeah. It turns into the power of a name that can heal. Yeah. That can deliver, that can set free. Amen. And so we see here that Paul, he, 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 he struggles with his calling and he's, he's trying to establish his apostleship. And so he has to write it down. I'm called to be an apostle. And this was a controversy in the church. This was an early controversy. People didn't want Paul to be called an apostle. Yeah, right. Huh? See, this is why you got to fight for your calling. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. 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 What if, what if the Apostle Paul would have just, would have just listened to the church? Would have just listened to the religious people? Would have just listened to the apostles? What if he just would have laid it down? You know what? You're probably right. I'm, I'm probably not an apostle. I'm probably not called to the Gentiles. What if that, listen, we wouldn't be here today. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Because the Bible says that Paul was called by Jesus to be a, an apostle to the Gentiles. Amen. Yeah. What is a Gentile? A Gentile is anybody who is not a Jew. Right. Somebody say Jew. Jew. Not you, Jew. J-E-W. <laughs> -E a Jew. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. Do we have any Jews here this morning? Raise your hand if you're a Jew. We love you. <laughs> you, got, you, probably, you did your family interest, you guys? <laughs> So we're all Gentiles, because we're not a Jew, we're all Gentiles. And Paul was the one who was sent because all the other 11 apostles were just preaching to the Jews. Remember even Jesus said, what did he say? I've been called to the lost sheep of Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 
The Samaritan tried to come and she tried to get a, get a miracle from him. And he said, no, 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 no. I've been called to the lost children of Israel. But this Samaritan, this Gentile was wise. She said, yes, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off the master's table. And she said, I've never seen such a great faith. Jesus said, your faith has healed you. But he just kept, he came, he came, he came first for the lost sheep of Israel. Huh? But imagine if Paul would have laid it down, we wouldn't be here. But Paul, he fought for his calling. He fought for his apostleship. I would dare to say that some of you, you've heard the call of God to be a pastor. You've heard the call of God to be in leadership, to be a preacher, to be a man of God, a woman of God. I believe that even women can prophesy, should prophesy. What is prophesy? Prophesy simply means speak the word of God. Huh? The Bible talks about an evangelist. He had 12 daughters, I believe, or seven, something like that. And all of them were prophetess. All of them spoke the word of God. And, and so I believe we, we, that, that you could be here and, 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 and you're fighting with the call of God because someone somewhere told you that, no, you're not called. And it, it may not always be an audible voice, uh -oh. Uh -oh. but it's an inner voice. An inner voice. See, those are the, those are the inner voices that lead you into depression. Those are the inner voices that lead you into suicide. Let's just say it's, 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 it's the enemy's voice. It's the devil's voice. And sometimes we don't help it because that's all we put inside of us. See, you, what, whatever you put in is what's going to come out. If you're constantly putting in, whether through radio, TV, social media, Things that are not encouraging your calling, yeah. huh? Then all you're going to hear is the enemy's voice. Amen. Yeah. The Bible says that he's the prince of the power of the air. Yeah. The prince of the power of the air. It's like Paul wrote to the Galatians church, "Who bewitched you?" Mm -hmm. huh? And sometimes we have been bewitched. In other words, I like to say, "Who okie doke you?" Yeah. Into talking you out of the calling of God. You don't think Paul, the Apostle Paul didn't hear those voices? He heard them in the church, he heard them outside the church. Right. He heard them in the church, he heard them in the palace. He heard them in the prison, he heard them everywhere he went. You're not an apostle. You're not an apostle. You, you, didn't, you weren't one of Jesus's, you didn't see, you, were, you didn't walk with Jesus. Huh? Paul heard it, but he fought for his calling. Yes. He fought for his calling. Amen. And how did he fight for it? By faith. In other words, he lived the life of faith. He kept preaching by faith. Even when they say he, they said that he couldn't preach, they say that Paul, some rumors say that Paul was like short and hunchbacked. Yeah. In other words, he was, he was ugly. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Paul. Break it. Beat me when I get to heaven. Huh? Right? Don't say that he was not too good looking. Like, like you know, he was opposite of me. <laughs> you know, but, you know and, 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 but, but, but Paul didn't allow those things to hold him back. He didn't allow those things. Well, you ain't got the suit to be a pastor. You ain't got the suit to be an apostle. He didn't allow those things. He fought for his apostleship. And he kept on preaching by faith. He kept on laying hands on people by faith. Yeah. He kept on evangelizing by faith. And every time he did so, you know what happened? People got saved. Miracles happened. Breakthroughs took place. And that was, a, that was the seal of his apostleship. That was a seal. You got to seal it. Yeah. You're calling, you got to seal it. You have to seal it. By walking in it, and fighting for it, and establishing it. What, what, what are we going to do? Get to heaven? And when God asks us, why didn't you fulfill the calling that was upon your life? Huh? 
well, because so and so told me. Who, but what did I tell you? Come on, man. That's right. Well, well, what did I tell you in that altar call? What did I tell you in that preaching? What did, I, what did my voice say? Yeah. We gotta listen to the voice of God. Yeah. Huh? Well, well, my wallet told me I, didn't, I couldn't afford it. Come on. Huh? Come on. Listen, don't ever, don't ever let your, your, your wallet speak to you of what you can and cannot do. Come on, somebody. Uh, don't ever, don't ever let your, your, what you see in your bank account tell you dictate what you cannot do. Uh, we're a perfect example as a church of that. Yes. If we would have looked at our, what we had in the bank account, we would have never raised up seventy-five thousand dollars for one. Huh? But we said we're not going to look at the natural. We have our eyes on God, and if God called us to do it. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And so Paul, he establishes his apostleship. But it wasn't an easy thing to do. He says, Paul, an apostle, and set apart for the gospel of God. The gospel of God. Brian, you can come up. The gospel of God. I'm going to just hit on the gospel of God. Now the whole book of Romans, it sets before us the gospel of God. You know, I used to think that when I read this text, that the gospel of God meant a message about God. But that is not what Paul is saying here. The God, what he's saying is that the gospel, follow me, belongs to God. The gospel, the good news, belongs to God. Paul is saying that the gospel he is about to describe is not a message which he invented. It's not a message that he invented by his own brilliant, creative imagination. Let me tell you something. We ain't smart enough to invent this stuff. Right. Right. Amen. And then, 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 I didn't do this. None of this. None of this. I'm not smart enough. And and, and you know that's why I thank God for Victory Outreach. Because truly, man, God chose the foolish things of the world right. when He chose us. Amen. Because when you look at us, Amen. Not just me. Look at you. <laughs> Come on now. We doing this. We ain't smart enough. We ain't smart enough. Hey, let me tell you something. Because we we could have probably done it, but we probably would have got locked up doing it. Hello. Right? I mean, we would have been doing it all illegal. Kidnapping people to bring them to church. At one point, come on. We're going to be drivers today, buddy. Uh, jumping out, throwing them in the van. We, you know, the salvation pickup. We just see people walking down the street, just jump, tie up, come in the van. Oh, man. 300 real quick. <laughs> Holding them at gunpoint. Yeah. Tie them. Come on. Ch -ch give. Come on, pour out your whole water. Come on. Right? That's how we would do it, and then guess what? A whole uh, five o'clock news, whole church goes to prison. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> but to do this, and we're still free? Oh. Right? Yeah. We, we, we ain't got a case? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we ain't smart enough. Do you know what we are? You know, at least for me, I was just dumb enough to believe. Come on, man. You'll catch that in a little bit. I, I was just dumb enough to believe God that God can use a donkey like me. I was just dumb enough to believe the word of God. Just dumb enough to believe that if you believe, you shall receive. Wade into the name and claim the gospel, but this gospel, this gospel 
was made by God. That's why it works. This method was made by God. That's why it works. The church was thought of by God. That's why it works. And it works with a bunch of foolish nobodies. A people who were no people. A people who were the least of the message the gospel of God it's, a, it's an announcement of the good news from God himself it's an announcement of the good news from God himself it is God's gospel God owns it God owns this, this message doesn't belong to me it belongs to God and, and let me tell you something about this gospel three things about this gospel and I'm done it's God made in other words, God designed it. And because God designed it, there's no defects. There's no defects in this gospel. You can you can try to you can try to find them and, and you probably will you what happens is that humans, we think that we find a defect in the gospel. Oh, see, see, see. And you spike the ball too early at the one yard line. That's what the devil did. On Good Friday, yeah. he thought he had the victory. Yeah. See, see, Jesus, he wasn't got he nobody. <laughs> see, sometimes when it seems like you lost, <laughs> just wait. Right. Just wait. Right. And then on the third day, he resurrected. Yeah. Because why? Because there's no defects in this gospel. It's God made. Number two, it's God guaranteed. It's God guaranteed. Where, God, what does that mean? That means wherever you preach this gospel, souls will get saved. Wherever you preach, souls will get saved. Preach it in your home, souls will get saved. Huh? Uh, now, we don't know when. I didn't say they're gonna get saved the first time, but they're gonna get saved. It's gonna, there people tell them, wherever you preach it, souls will get saved. It's God guaranteed. Wherever you preach this gospel, a church will be built. Because the gates of hell shall not prevail. And you are Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. What rock? The confess, not Peter himself. Come on now. The statement that Peter made when he was asked, Who do men say that I am? And Peter said, you are the Messiah, That's right. the son of the living God. Yeah. Boom, the gospel was preached. Oh, but Peter fell after that. But it's all right, because it's God guaranteed. And then a couple of more chapters later, Peter got baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, preached his first preaching, and 3,000 got saved. Because the gospel is guaranteed. And thirdly, because it's God, God made, it's the gospel of God, is that it's God sustained. It's God sustained. In other words, God backs up the gospel. He, it, it, it's, it's God, it, it, God sustains this message. He has sustained it. Let me tell you, this message ain't going nowhere. I don't care if you could try to ban the Bible in the schools, you could try to ban the Bible in the courtroom, you could try to even ban the Bible in your home, it doesn't matter. This, they, you know they try to burn all the Bibles at one time? But this Bible is still, you can burn every single Bible in the world, but you know what? It's still in my heart, and it's still in your heart, and you'll have men that will begin to write it again. Come on, son. Because, it, because this word is living, it's active. It's God sustained, it's God backed. It's the gospel of God. It belongs to God. It's not man-made, it is God's word. It is God's word. God's word. And God is a, he's not a man that he should lie. Good news. The gospel means 
good news. It's not, it's not new news because it's been preached since the Old Testament. Huh? To a lot of people, it is new news because they've never heard it. And there's still people in this world that have never heard the gospel. And this is why we as a church got to continue to do things like run for hope. We got to continue to go on missionary trips. We need to get out. Listen, some of you, you need to get out of GP. You guys, you guys are like, yeah, man, GP, pull the GP. Movida. I'm born here, I'm going to die here. No, no, you got to change. Right. You gotta change. Not, you gotta you got get out of GP. You gotta you gotta you got you gotta get out of your comfort zone. If not, you know what God does. Sometimes He has a way of moving you. Yeah. Send a little tribulation your way. Yeah. We go, we gotta go beyond the walls of the church and continue to preach the gospel. Yeah. The good news. The good news brings hope. Did the good news give you hope. Yeah. Gave you hope this morning. Stand to your feet this morning. Lift your hands to the Lord right there where you're at. I don't know what spoke to you this morning. Maybe you're in that place of fighting for your calling. Maybe you've bitten into the lie of, you know what, at one time you believed you could preach. At one time you believed that God had something for you. But now you're in a place where, I don't know, man, I'm just comfortable where I'm at. The devil would love to just keep you comfortable where you're at. Because you're no danger to him there. But you know, the devil don't fight fair. He'll tell you that it's okay. He'll tell you that, you know what, stay there and I won't mess with you. But he's lying. He's lying. He's happy, but he's lying. Because later on he's going to come and he's still going to try to destroy you. Because the devil won't be happy till you're in hell with him. And he's going to continue to try to get you to backslide, to backslide. You know, the best thing to do is just to go full force. Because guess what? The devil can't overpower you then. When you're giving it all you can, you're swinging all you can, he's, he's, you, have, you have a forward motion going for you. So, so don't let the enemy steal your calling. The gospel is still good news. And let me tell you something, it's not just good news for the person who's lost, it's good news for the Christian as well. Amen. You know what I've realized in my 24 years, going on 25 years of serving God, is that the gospel is good news to the Christian, to me every day. Every day I thank God and I thank God for the hope of glory. I thank God because I'm a sinner saved by grace. And I still say, hello somebody. So I thank God that I can wake up and say, you know what? Thank you, Lord, for your mercy, your grace today. Thank you for your blood today. Because I can sure use another dose. I can use another dose of the mercy of God, the power of God upon my life to change my life. I still, God, I still want you to change me. I still believe you can change a person like me. Does anybody still, does anybody feel like you still got to change? Amen. Amen. Lift your hands to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your presence in this place. This morning, I'm going to do something different. Uh, we're going to do a celebration here, but I'm going to, I'm going to make an altar call just for prayer. If you need prayer this morning, now I'm going to call my leaders to come. Come line up right here. If you're a G group leader, come join us. Come help us pray. Oh, brother. Help us pray.